hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. She's been traveling around all over the place. Can't feel the Spirit of God in any church. But she got said she got renewed tonight. She's up here speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Hey, that's why we're here, church, in case you didn't know that. That's why we're here. Yeah, that's a good place to clap, Brother Calderon. That's right. Hallelujah. Devil can't stop us. Unless you will be stopped, he can't stop us. Oh, Jesus. Revelations 20. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's amazing how perfectly God can bring words of direction and healing and strength to us. I want to be here to receive it. Praise God. You would be surprised if you could see physically what happens spiritually in many ways, but specifically, um, I've had to beat myself up in preaching. Just hammering myself, preaching away to me. Like other people gleaning stuff, that's okay, but God, God was using me to, oh Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> what a God we serve, man. He, you can't beat his system. If you're in it, <laughs> if, you're, if, if you'll submit to it, boy, you can't beat it. Praise God. Revelations 20 and verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. And no, I'm not preaching all through Isaiah and all the prophecies. Don't worry about that. All right. Key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Might sound something like that. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. In case you're wondering who this is, they're being real clear about it. And bound him, somebody say they bound him. Bound him, bound him a thousand years and cast him, somebody say cast him. Yes. Cast him into the bottomless pit. And say this part with me. And shut him up. Didn't that just feel good? Shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. My God, we are living in a day of deception, but my God, that, that ain't for us. I mean, it can be if you're listening to the ways of the world and your logic more than the, the Word of God. Then you'll be deceived. Praise God. I want to preach to us the Word of the Lord today. And I know I, know I was saying, you know, last service was what it was. If you weren't here, you have to hear that. We're going to be uploading that probably tonight. There's been a little technical error, but it, it should be totally resolved. Um, if you weren't here last time, listen to that message. Uh, this is almost, you know how God does. What, what, was, that, what was that one message, guys? Cosmic cord. Yeah, so this is like step, yeah, this is like step two and a half. So not a full step three. So praise God. Shut him up and send him packing. Get him out, send him packing. However you want to word it, that's what we're preaching today. Put your Bibles down and lift your hands one more time. In the name of Jesus, would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord. God, I need your anointing, God. God, on my best day, I'm not good enough to deliver your word without your anointing. Oh, my God, I need your understanding. We need your revelation, God. I pray, Lord, you would draw us closer to you, that we would leave with more faith, that we would leave with greater understanding, and revelation bless these wonderful wonderful powerful people in this house today we give you glory and praise God anoint me to, to, to give your word and anoint us all to receive it I want my heart to be usable ground where the seed can grow in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah give him some praise right now thank you Lord oh hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're about to start up again if we're not careful here. Jesus, praise God. You may be seated in the name that's above every name. Praise the Lord. 
And if her back or something is bad and she prefers to stand, she can do whatever she wants to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shut him up and get him out. And I'm not talking about your husband, sister. <laughs> or your... Well, I might be... You know, if you have an older child that's just staying at home and being a leech. I mean, that... You know, we'll get... He's not a leech. He's a... You don't look like a leech, bro. I mean... See, there you go. He's a good boy. So there we go. Send him, <laughs> shut him up. I, I could really switch some things up right about now and preach to some folks, but they ain't here to receive it. But you are, so I ain't going to do that. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 10 is where we're going right now. We're going to talk about some things here in the Word of God. And I, I kind of receive this, most of this, and God's like, hold, just hold on to it. And then he kind of finished it. And I, I, after I got it all complete and all worked out, then, then I began to see how this works into the 2.5 step and how it just is a, a right spot. You feel me? So praise God. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. For though, and Lord, hey y'all, the, the, th <laughs> the things you hear from the pulpit in a service, um, hopefully from all of us, but... Um, I try for sure to, you know, when I get up here, I don't just waste my time and waste your time and stuff like that. When God is moving like he was earlier, uh, you need to heed what is being said as though it's the middle of a red hot preaching. You feel me? Do yourself a favor. Do us all a favor, okay? So so this message here today, uh, the, I, I'm seeing the timing on this and, I, and I'm realizing you know, what's going on. One thing I noticed that I, I happened to mention last service was, was, you know, God has been preparing so many of you for that message for a long time. And that's the truth. So there are, and, and, and I'm just filling people in here, getting us all up to speed, uh, what we've gone through for the past couple months. Okay, you're not alone. You, the devil been fighting you. You've been struggling. You've been falling on your face. Been getting up. Been just trying to just trying to survive. Listen, you're not alone. So don't be feeling alone. Don't be pity partying. All right. Uh, I, I even explained what was about to happen and what was going on, and that's exactly what happened. Okay. So we're still in the hand of God. That hasn't changed. That's not going to change. We're still being led by God. That's not going to change. Okay. Praise God. So he's 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 come to help us tonight. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to Sunday. Supposed to have a bunch of people here, by the way. You see how God's just... See, and it, it hasn't even turned... We got stuff going on. We, we got to be ready. Don't be distracted. Church, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted by your own problems. Do you hear me? Don't be distracted by your own problems. If you're a root in this tree and we're trying to bear fruit for Jesus... And you know how a root sometimes will come up above the ground and you, you know, because I've mowed lawns before and you nick it with the lawnmower, right? That can be annoying. That can actually really mess your, the whole thing up, right? But what if you're a root and it's your job to draw water and resources and do your thing for 30% of that tree and you got nicked, just nicked by a lawnmower blade and you go, well, my world isn't perfect now. I'm shutting off all the water. I'm just going to focus on healing that little little bark scab on me, so I'm, you see what I'm saying? And then 30% of that tree is, is starting to die. Get your eyes off of the distractions of your own imperfect existence, which we all have. In Jesus' name, it will bless you to do it. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, <laughs> we do not war after the flesh. Now, wasn't that a perfect segue for that scripture? That was completely unintentional. 100%. Though we walk in the flesh, well, that's a bummer. <laughs> Any way around that? Well, yeah, later. <laughs> okay. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, we did the carnal thing. It's called the Old Testament. 
Oh, we got a battle today. Who's going to join me in battle? And if you don't join me, you know, we're coming back for you. Remember all those? There's some crazy wild stories back there, man. But there was blood and guts and people dying. And there's a few stories where the enemy would turn on each other. Just, ah, yeah, I mean, boy, you want, it pays to be on the right side of the battle. <laughs> all right. But that's not really how we fight today. Unless we need to. Mm. Okay. For we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Mighty. So it, it, it kind of paints like two sides of the coin there. They're not this, but they're that. Any quizzing kids? Kind of like Proverbs. The, the, the verses. Da, 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 and then that. Okay? It's not, not uh, let's see, carnal, but mighty. As though it's an opposite. That's not hard to believe, is it? The more carnal you are and the less spiritual you are, the less powerful you are. This isn't rocket science here tonight. So the weapons we use for this battle are mighty through God. Oh boy. Now look, if you want to try to fight mightily and don't do it through God, this world is full of people just like that. <laughs> and they'll, they're deceiving people right now. Oh, Jesus. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down. Uh-oh, some people get lost in the two. This ain't in my notes, but boy, it's good preaching right here. Some people get lost in the two right there. To the pulling down of strongholds. Man, I, I'm, I'm living for God. I know what's right. I'm never going back. I got the Holy Ghost. Man, my family's going to live for God. We're going to do what's right. As long as everything smooths out in the next 65 seconds. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to go to war. I'm ready to have a backbone. I'm ready to do all these things as long as God gives me complete and utter victory in the next six and a half minutes. And if he doesn't, where's he at? He's late. He don't hear my prayer. He must be, you know, kind of like, like the Old Testament. Is your God on vacation? Maybe he's gone, you know, and start making fun. That's how we sometimes can treat our God when he's not on our timeline the weapons of our warf warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. We, we can't skip any of these steps. Through God to. Uh, we are driving to. We are going to. It is a journey. It's a, I'm here. We are going this direction to the pulling down of strongholds. If you will stay faithful in your weaponry and you will stay faithful in your fighting and you just don't give up and you fight until the victory comes, you will see the pulling down of strongholds in your life and in the people that you're sent to, to, to reach. Well, I thought people were going through a tougher time. Maybe y'all just perfect and I'm the only one that struggles with things. I thought maybe somebody would go, you know what? You know, or maybe, maybe it's just our flesh that doesn't like to hear that. Because that means we have to persevere. And there, boy, we could just bring some scriptures right along there that talk about perseverance. And just going, and I'm just going to get in, and I'm not going to get out of this. I, I've been talking to so many people in the last few weeks, and the, the, the blinders... The blinders, you got to put on blinders sometime in this battle. They did that to horses in battle. You know why? Because they couldn't afford that horse messing around and getting distracted and getting spooked when a man is on there and his life is on the line and a battle is on the line and a nation is on the line and that's who you and I are here today. You have to get blinders on sometime. And I could preach this to the sinner, and boy, hey, get your eyes off the world. It's, it's going untoward God. It's, it's going away from God. It's going to be lost. There's nothing out there but, but heartache, and, and I could preach it like that. But boy, I could preach it to some saints of God as well. Again, instead of being on my own problems, instead of being all on the questions that I don't know, instead of being on the past that never did do me any good in all those ways, all that got to go beyond. Hey, the Bible still says, if you're looking, let me, let me paraphrase it. If you're looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. It didn't say if you've ever looked back, but while you're looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. So it matters where your attention is. It matters what your mind is doing all day at work, no matter what you're doing. Don't get lost in the two there. 
mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's, a, that's a kind of a major promise. It didn't say it would lightly talk to the enemy. Well, let's see if we can negotiate. Hi, I was just wondering if, if we left a bunch of military equipment here. It, oh, okay, I'll skip that. If, um, that that's not uh, to the pulling down. Down. Out of power. Off their thrones. Off their horses. I, I don't think y'all even hearing me yet. To the pulling down of the strong things that have been flexing over you and running your life and, and keeping you in submission and in subjection and keeping you doubting the ways of God. There's a way to have those cast down if we're willing to fight until... I'm about to preach a whole different message right now. You have to fight until. There is no resting certainty. Maybe you've heard this. There's no resting certainty of victory. There is only a fighting certainty of victory in this thing. You can't put it in neutral and expect to just continue up the hill for more than a few yards. If you decide to fight God's way, then fight God's way and put down the other things that are ineffective. My God, there'd be people more in the house today if they decided to just do it all God's way, not partially God's way. One more time, that's why he said, go ahead and, and, and lean on the Lord and, and with all your might and, and trust him and do it and lean not unto your own understanding. He covered both bases. Don't just embrace my ways and try to retain yours. It's still easy to live for God hard. And it's hard and impossible to live for God easy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. It, it, it grieves my heart. It grieves my heart, the people that, that really do love God. And they have practiced living for God easy for decades. And they cannot break out of that. Yeah. It's sad. Shame on preachers that the culture is that. And they are never challenging the people at a biblical level. I want to know what God expects out of me. As a child of God. As your brother. As your husband. As a friend. As a leader. As a, I, I want to know what his expectations are. And any leader that will not bring those forth. They're killers of sheep. Killers of sheep. I better move on. Whew. To the pulling down of strongholds. Praise God. Thank God. First John 3, 6. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hey, if you want to be like Jesus, you're going to want to tear down. Man, remember that old song? Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Oh my goodness, that's, that's that old Pentecostal song right there. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Mm hmm. If you're like Jesus, hey, the more time you spend with him, the more you become like him. He's a fighter. He's a warrior. He does it effectively. He did it through God. Jesus did it through God, being the mighty God in Christ. He was 100% God. He was 100% man. He didn't say, okay, I got this as the, as the man. He was challenged to do that time and time again, first by his brothers, by the enemy. All, you're going to see some things. My God, hey, the more you're like Jesus, the more you're going to want to destroy the works of the enemy. And it's more than in your life. You'll want to tear them down in the lives of your friends. You'll want to put on arms for the, the lives of your, your children and the people that you know. You will fight others' battles just like we did earlier here today. The more you're like Jesus, the more you spend time in his presence. But the more we, if we, if we just talk about it, oh, well, it sounds good. I'll, I'll just go, uh-oh, let me go back to last service. I'll just go to a church at that higher level, but I won't attain that higher level. That's a recipe for spiritual suicide. Yeah. 
Become like him and you will destroy the works of the enemy. Back in verse 5, casting down imaginations. Oh Lord. <sighs> imaginations. And every high thing. Didn't it just say that if we don't get lost in the two, those high things can come down through the effective warfare? Casting down imaginations, it starts right up here, guys. What I was saying earlier about why we, why we lift our voice to God and let Him hear us, it is linked to your identity and your belief and therefore your response and the faith element in getting Him. All of that is one big machine. And it works together. Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Why don't we just go down to the movie house and watch all those Hollywood produced movies that are anti-God, anti-good, pushing every evil agenda? Why do we not have televisions in our house? Why are we very careful on the internet and we use that as a tool, not just a let me screw, because that, that is not what, hey, the internet is not what it was 20 years ago. Amen. Facebook is not what it was 20 years ago. None of the, it's all a slow integration of getting the masses back to basically just having a TV in front of your face that will program you. Yeah. Casting down imaginations, it didn't just say your imaginations. Do you know how many people imagine something else? Let, God, I, let me tell you how spiritual stuff works. Somebody will be possessed or oppressed or impressed by a demonic spirit and led as they write a song or led as they produce a movie or a show. And come on, everybody knows the, the devil is the king of deception. So don't just be like, oh, pastor, it's okay. I can handle it. My Holy Ghost, your Holy Ghost is jacked up if you think it's God's will for there even to be a pipeline of that garbage in your house. When's the last time you went over to the stove and just turned the gas on and let it go? It's okay. I'll be careful with my lighters around here. I got a, f a flame burning downstairs, you know, to make it smell good. I got good reasons, Pastor, for me not listening to you. It's okay. I got good reasons. I'll, I'll be careful with it. No, you're a fool. Because the devil's been at it a long time and he's here to do three things. Steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll do it. My God, he has complete control in a few areas. Hey, we just preached about the areas we have control of. My God, don't miss that message. But he has some complete areas of control as well. And that's one of them. And this is a, a topic way too easy to preach about right now. But we got to hear it. A focused child of God that plans on not getting lost as they battle has no business with any of that junk. Any of that junk. My God, get it out your house. Oh, uh-oh, do I got to explain this? Let me explain this. Let me explain this. There's a reason why you feel the presence of God every single service that you walk into this place. <laughs> There's a reason why the glory of God comes down and he does miracles and he works in lives and he puts things back together and he heals things you thought would never be. There's a reason why he's able to do that in a house like this because holiness still matters. He rides on it wherever he moves. There's holiness and we're not compromising. There's a reason. There's a reason why when we went to peak, they were just practicing a song on the first night. Right out the gate, first night, they're practicing. And the Holy Ghost was just flowing in there. And the tears were flowing down our faces. And people weren't even seated. They're just... Uh, uh, there's a reason. There's a reason why. That there's power. There's power. 
Not every battery can hold the same amount of power. Do you understand how this works, folks? I can't make this more easy to understand. You can't start a tractor with a nine volt battery. It has to be something that can hold the power. There's a reason why God can do what he, what he does in this place. It's because some people have the understanding of I am the church. I don't go to the church. So how I live at home and if I leave the gas on and I'll just be careful with the, all of that programming my kids. Pro, every bit of that has everything to do with what happens in this house. Every bit of, in every one of your homes. In every one of our homes. And it doesn't matter who else lives there. And all. Hey, if it's your house, you better do it. Hey, sometimes it's got to be Jesus or somebody else. And you have to make a decision. If you got to put him away to come home, he's coming back for a people. What's he going to do? Go, uh, sorry, you couldn't invite me to your house. I guess I can't invite you to mine. There's some people that rejected what I said right there. And they're not here today. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Everybody knows that God made Adam and Eve. Everybody knows that we're made in the image of God. So there's value in a life no matter how small. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> there are things trying to exalt themselves in this world today against everything that we claim to stand for. Sometimes you got to pick a side, folks. I know people, people listen, this is an, it's an easy way out to just go, well, I'm just on the fence with everything. I'm just the prince of, of complete perfect balance. And, and I no, like, no, no. It is that that's the easy way out. That's uh, that, that means you don't have to think much. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought before you say your situation is hopeless, every thought. Before you say I can't Every thought. Before you say this is out of control and, and I don't even think, every, every thought. Before you say, well, I don't know if, if, if I can make every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Before you count someone out of living for God, every thought. Because I promise you, I mean, I'll, I can't speak for you, but I'll speak for me. I wasn't just someone that they looked at and said, oh yeah, he'll be a preacher someday. He'll be a leader of men. Before you count somebody out that the Holy Ghost said, go minister to them. Go love them. Go bless them. Go bear their burden. Well, they're not perfect like me. Well, they don't know Jesus. Well, they're never going to know Jesus unless a real person that does know Jesus gets close enough to them that they feel Jesus. There's religion all throughout the world. And you, oh God, I hate, I hate all the reports that I get about church folks that don't look nothing like Jesus. And they go, oh, you're a pastor? Oh, you must be all about money. And you must never have time for anybody. And, and you must, uh, you know, and it's so opposite. Brother Felix over there laughing like that. Exactly, because it's just the opposite of what we're aiming for around here. But there's people like that filling pulpits right now in this city. They need you and the love of Jesus to get close enough to them. Because they have never met someone like you before. They've met people that claim they want to be like you. That claim they know, but they've never come in contact with somebody like you before. But we can't do that if we're not casting imaginations down. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought 
Oh, I feel resonation from last uh, service there, Brother Larry, in that uh, comment. How? To, to the obedience of Christ. I think it said amen. I'll, t I'll take it. <laughs> what kind of obedience? Hey, what, what kind of obedience? Into captivity, every thought to the obedience. Not me. Not me on my worst day or my best day or your best or worst. The obedience of Christ. One more time, it's him and his word that we want to line up to. Not your neighbor, not your friend, not who's doing this. Forget all of that. That, that leads the opposite direction of where we're going. We're reflecting ourselves against him. Christ-like obedience. That, that tough, unbending, very focused, extreme obedience. Even as a child, the main part of his day was doing what the father said do. As he learned how to be a carpenter. He had balance, folks. We preach about that around here. Balance, right? He had balance. He didn't just go, well, well sorry, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> Dad, whatever. You know, <laughs> um, like, I'm all about these bigger things. Like, what you doing? Like, whew, carpentry work. I ain't got time for that. I'm a world changer. What's up? Okay, that's, that's not how Jesus was. Right. He learned. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he learned through the things that he suffered. He limited himself. As God, he limited himself. So he had this balance. He, he decided to learn things. He decided to go through things and still be focused. And still when it was time to be about the father's business, he said, everybody else, y'all take off. I'm going to be here doing the father's business and y'all going to travel for three days and wonder where I'm at. You'll come back and find me. He knew it when it was time to be focused he was kingdom-minded 24-7 in balance. Uh, to, to say that Jesus, you know, walk, w walked with God would kind of be an understatement, I guess. Maybe he ran. <laughs> Maybe he ran with God, you know. Because uh, he served God as a man. I know it's weird hearing a one God preacher speak like this, but in his humanity, in his full humanity, that humanity was fully focused on trying to please the Father. And he had to reiterate that several times to people. Like, hey, whoa, whoa, hold on. Even, that, even the one time when the, when the lady started getting all crazy, coming at, come at, come at him in this weird angle, and, she, and he's like, well, anyway, and he brought it all, all the way back to the spiritual. She started keying on his physical too much, and he, he was having none of that. That's just one illustration of the balance that Jesus had going, okay, uh, yes, I'm a man. Yes, I'm, yes, we're talking about physical things, but hold on. This is a primarily spiritual mission that I'm on. Okay? Anybody want to be like Jesus, though? But you're going to sound weird to the people you work with. But they're not going to understand why you dress the way you dress and why you don't feel the need to fall apart when they're falling apart. Come on, it's the cool thing. You might as well be offended. You might as well have hatred in your heart. Like, no, no, you're going to have to stand out. Hey, if you want to rise up at some, some point, you're going to have to stand out at some point. If you're going to leave this world at some point with Jesus, you're going to have to start now. You're going to have their destiny if you continue to have their focus. There's an identity that has to change. And by the way, it's supposed to change when you put his name on in baptism. You don't live the way you used to live. You don't look the way you used to look. You don't speak the way you used to speak. Something happens in a covenant that is more important than a marriage. It is not, you don't just get baptized and go, well, it's okay, I'll be down at the bar, I'll, I'll come to church later. You know, I'll be speaking in tongues later. I'm over here cussing somebody out over here. Or, I mean, everything in our life is supposed to change and begin to reflect Jesus. Right. Isn't that right, Brother Felix? Hey, you look like a real Christian now. Got a clean, shaved face. That wasn't planned out. It's just the ways of God in action. They work. There's a reason why we teach and preach what we teach and preach. Because you can't beat the system that God designed for His people. <laughs> Hallelujah. It'll be effective. 
My God, people be doing crazier stuff than that just to get a paycheck. People get all crazy with how, they, man, what do I need to do? Cover up tattoos? Get tattoos. Have a haircut? Not have a haircut. What do I need to do just to make a dollar to get into some club that doesn't even matter? We're talking about the kingdom of God. It's the biggest thing that you've ever experienced. It's the biggest thing you've, you'll ever be a part of. There's nothing more important than what you're doing. I'll pay a small price of looking godly and modest and like, the, praise God, I'm, I'm glad he covers these bases. I'm glad I don't have to wonder what a man's supposed to look like, a woman's supposed to look like. Hallelujah. And I thank God for the blessings that's integrated when we learn and do it. It opens up doors. Well, hey, am, am I still in the word? Pray, uh, you better believe it. <sighs> Walking versus running. Y'all ever been a patron at a store or something? And you could, you know, they used to call them convenience stores. Now it can be inconvenience stores because some of those people that work there have no business working. Wash your window, you're out your mind. That's too much work. Let me finish. Oh, this one gets me. I'm standing at a counter. I got 500 things to do. I got to pay for two items. Usually went to the store for one. I got to pay for five items. <laughs> just waiting. And they're just chatting. Supposed to be ringing my stuff up. Her and another coworker. Oh, just chatting about absolute nonsense. I'm just staring dead at him. <laughs> Sometimes they still don't get it, Brother Ross. Because that's their just that's the reality they live in. It's just it's just they, they can't even put two and two together. Like like li listen, I, I, I still remember uh, Les Schwab. You pull up, guess what they do? They run out. And no, you can't wear certain things. And yes, gentlemen, your hair has to be cut a certain length. If you're going to work for a tire, tires are not eternal things. But to work for that company and represent, see what I'm saying? My God, we're, we're miles above that. But they will run out to do this. You go to Oregon to pump your gas. Oh, you know, some places, they're getting lax on that, by the way. They're getting pretty lax, like... Washington plates, they're used to doing this. I'm going to stay over here on Minecraft. It's okay. They're going to get it. Because if I stay over here, they're just going to realize I ain't coming after a while. It's the mindset of today's generation, sadly. There are times when it's time to run. I try to be polite and, and a good example everywhere I go. But I've, I've been real close. To be like, like do you, do you want to work today? Do you want to work because right now you're on the job. <laughs> and it, here, here's what your job is because apparently you don't understand. You know, there are times when it's time to hustle. Yeah. I try to teach my kids this so they're not the person at the job that gets fired for being lazy. Huh. Am I the only one that ever faces these frustrations? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Good. Whew. Thank God. Oh, Lord. In, look, at, look at the book of Matthew chapter 4, if you will. It surely matters where your brain is. <sighs> it, it, you know, it, it, in, in those times of, of you know, you're, you're at the, the workplace and, and you're waiting for somebody to do what they should do, it would be amazing if they just had a sign on the wall like an electronic sign that had their paycheck up there. And the slower they walked, the less they made. And they could see it in real time. That would solve some problems, some motivational problems solved. It matters when you keep your mind on the target, on what am I doing here? What is it time to do now? What's my responsibility in this moment? <sighs> Jesus had that type of focus. Jesus had that. He had to have that type of focus. He had his family against him. 
He had all the people that knew him, all the people that didn't know him, the enemy himself, and his own flesh to contend with. He had to be super focused. But look, folks, you, here's a revelation. Don't, don't, don't slip into neutral on me right here. Here's a revelation, okay? What did that bring him? Did that bring him ease and lax every day? It brought him the opposite of that. It, it, it brought him having to pay the sins of the whole world and being spit on and beat and hated and, and rejected. What brought him that? Maintaining the mission. Staying focused on the mission. So we, we know this world is going to hell. We know we've been called by God to save some people. We know God stands ready in this place to do his part in our lives. But just because it doesn't instantly smooth everything else out, man, I'm finally getting focused like I've never been focused before, and it seems like there's problems. Duh. Yes. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. You don't begin to second guess God because the world is treating you bad. Not the same thing. You don't get mad at God because people treat you bad. It's not the same thing and it doesn't matter their title or what they say. It's not the same thing. Remaining focused when it's time to focus, casting down imaginations when it's time to cast them down, not getting lost in the two, but getting to the victory, getting to the place where those things are cast down. That's what has to maintain your focus. And it can't be contingent on how my day was, if I had a flat tire, who was rude to me, how slow the gas pump was. If you want to do it like Jesus. Now, if you want to do it your way, it still blows my mind. Their life has been a wreck their whole life. They come and see the power of God and the way that this does work. Hey, there's blessings. Hey, there's peace and joy. Hey, there's healing and growth. Eh, I think I'll go back to my own ways of utter disaster and failure. Okay. And, okay, let me bring this full circle. Here's what seems to happen. I feel good. I feel free. Th there's nothing on me. Now. I, I, I got, hey, there, everything's cool. Uh, I, 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 can't, I ain't got time for you. I, f first of all, they go right back to self. They go instantly right back to self. I don't care about you. I don't care about you. I don't care about... Anybody that's poured themselves into me, given me anything, blessed me, d did more than for me than they should, I don't care nothing about you. It's all about me, and I'm feeling good right now. You know why? Because you're so far off the target. You're, you're fighting for the enemy's side. So no, you're not going to be harassed by the devil. No, you're not having to fight the real fight. No, you don't have to get your mind under control to have the victory because victory is optional. Forget that. I don't need victory anyway. I just need usually money in my pocket or to appease my flesh. One of those two. And when you have one of those two and you're so far off the target, you feel free, you feel on top of, in deception. Free and on top of the world and the devil's like, yeah, they're, appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Not going to target you anymore. And then here we are, slaving away, loving Jesus, praying, worshiping, allowing God to work, coming in, creating an atmosphere like this tonight, being a soldier with victory. And it seems imbalanced. Oh, man. What did Job say? Oh, man. My foot had well nigh slipped. Or David. My foot well nigh slipped. Oh, my God. I began to see... I was, look, from my perspective, we can start feeling pity party for ourselves, and boy, that never is a good thing. That never helps your clarity, nor your strength. He said, I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I'm a man of God. Lord, don't you, am I a child of God? Do you see, God, do you see, those people shouldn't have won Powerball, I should have won it. I know y'all ain't prayed that. I, I might or might not have. 
God, you don't you know what's going on here? He, yeah, we're not the only ones. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, my foot all it was almost it was almost all I, I I was it was game over. It, he didn't say it was a tough time. He said it was game over. My foot had well nigh slipped until I went to the house of God. And the clarity that comes. And the strength that comes. And the revelation that comes that, hey, just because I'm in a storm, it doesn't mean... I'm wrong, it means I'm probably right. It means I'm remaining focused. It means I'm challenging hell. And it, it's not time for me to back up or shut up or sit down. It's time for me to walk with him, to run with him, to stay focused, to get some blinders on, to fight with the weapons that work until the strongholds have come down. It's a revelation. Get that. On Monday morning, get that. After church on the way home when you want to argue with your spouse, get that. When you don't want to use the Holy Ghost for what it is, please get that. Then was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones, they be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Somebody say, Every word. Every word. We preach every word around here. We're not for sale. We love everybody and want to see them saved. But we're not changing the doctrine for them to accept salvation now that they're here to get saved. I mean, people get some craziness. I still need Jesus more than he needs me. It's still a privilege for me to know his ways. And, and, and oh God, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, then the devil taketh him into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Oh, Lord. Hey, y'all better try the spirits to make sure they're of God. By the fruits, you shall know them. The devil led Jesus to a holy city. The devil was in a holy city. Anybody get what I'm talking about yet? If this is one. How many reasons do we need to cut ties with the world? With the influence and the programming that is deceptive Say it unto him, if thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, if you're really who you say you are. It's identity. Do yourself a favor and get all of the ways of God and just jump in and take a bath in them and roll all over the ways of and get them all over you. Because the more things that lock you in as a child of God, that you get in your mind that your identity is not what it used to be. It's not when you were born in sin. But now I'm a person of passion and purpose and power. And I'm not just in my family, but I'm in the biggest thing in the universe. I'm in the kingdom of God. And I'm on a mission. And I'm in a battle. And I'm unstoppable. And God, hey, the more you get the identity of a child of God down in every part of your life, it's only a blessing and a safeguard to you if Jesus was not sold on his identity then what we wouldn't be here do whatever it takes to get the identity down hallelujah if thou be the son of God cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee you ever notice he just said, cast yourself down? If the devil could kill you, he would have already done it. Seeking, he, he walks to and, fro, to and fro, being real loud, roaring all kinds of stuff, seeking whom he may devour. Excuse me, can I destroy you today? He has to ask. We have to let him. 
If he could have destroyed Jesus, he would have done it right there. He would have cast him down. He can't hurt you. Just like Job. Oh, oh, he'll be given a little bit of little bit of string, but guess what? It'll get to you and it'll build some strength in you. It'll build some resolve in you. It'll teach you how to resist the devil and watch him flee. It'll show you an opportunity where the ways of God will come through and be faithful. And guess what? You can bench 5,000 pounds in the spirit and you couldn't even lift the barbell last week. He can't destroy you unless you refuse to start... Just keep casting those imaginations down in every high thing that exalts itself against this word of God here tonight. As you leave this place, well, I, I, he was getting kind of funky. I don't, know, I don't know if that's for me. And I, there's, there's always an excuse, and hell's going to be full of people with ex- excuses. He, can't, he couldn't cast Jesus down. He can't cast you down. Come on. Jesus said unto him, it's written... Again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him to an exceeding high mountain, shows all the kingdom of the world, the glory of them. He said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He tries the same kind of stuff with us, with, with us guys. I'll give you physical things. Wait, but he said the weapons of our warfare are, our warfare are not carnal they, but mighty through its spirit. Oh, no, no, no. Let's not talk about that spiritual stuff. I'll give you physical stuff if you make sure you don't prioritize the spiritual. He tried to pull that on Jesus. People fall for it every day. Yeah. Jesus didn't fall for it. Who are you hanging around? Oh. Uh-huh. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Get out. You got to go. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Oh, there's a revelation right here. There's a revelation. What, what did the devil say? Then, uh, let's see, verse 9. All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. <laughs> and he says, uh, let's see. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou. Do you see how just possessions and physical things are instant related to worship? Well, I'm not worshiping this stuff. It's just getting between me and God. I'm not worshiping it. I'm not worshiping it. But I'm not going to be in church because of it. Even though I could. I mean, I could not do that and then do that. But I'm not worshiping it. Oh, well, (laughs) seems like if Jesus is at that standard, we're probably kind of already there. Uh Uh-oh, can I take it one more step? I don't worship them. I just keep track of what's going on. I just know all the stats more than I know Bible verses about men running around a field, acting stupid, sinful lifestyles, nothing having to do with God. God. They're the gods of this world. That's not in question. That's not in question. Even sinners know sports and Hollywood are the gods of this world. Well, I'm not worshiping them. I'm just going to represent them by what I wear. That's weird. What if I just got a tattoo on my chest that said Katie Reed? Be a little weird. Kind of would. And I even know her. I even know her. We spent hours in the presence of God, trips, having fun. I mean, well, I know you pretty well. Still be really weird. Yeah. <laughs> Why would a man wear a sports team on his jacket or his hat or his anything? I'm representing because we're that tight. You don't know those guys, and they sure ain't sharing their money with you. There's a deception in it, folks. Hello. Do, do you feel stupid? Somebody don't even, I, I don't know what, know what to say. Hey, there's deception in it. They're, the God, they're not just an average thing. They're the gods of this world. They're in a special place. Listen, I could preach about a million other worldly things, but this is in a special place because they are the gods of the world. 
Would you be caught dead coming to an apostolic fire powerhouse like this and then going from here down the road to the Buddhist temple and worshiping Buddha? Oh, what's, why, why not? You came. You spoke in tongues. You felt the power of God. It's okay. Same. What, what, what's wrong with sharing your allegiance and identity? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Amen. And you're putting an identity on you that's not even yours. It's foolishness. It's empty. It's the gods of this world and their deception to get you focused on something temporary so you don't focus on the eternal and the fight you're in and the calling of God on your life and get your mind off of the things that will keep you winning in this battle. It's the plan of the enemy. It's part of his arsenal. Wake up. It matters to a child of God yeah. on many levels. Right. You think it's a, just a, a coincidence all their games are on Sunday? People out there, wor you're saying that they ain't worshiping them? Yes! Oh, they literally do the as though, yes, I am specifically, purposefully worshiping. Oh, did you see that play? Worshipping the creature more than the creator. Oh, I'm still in the word. And I could preach this another hour easy. Why are you going so hardcore on this, pastor? Because it's life or death in your identity, just like it was with Jesus. It's life or death in who you worship. It's life or death where your heart is and where your brain is. Oh my God, it's a shame to say that I've seen people that hold a title that have no, just, they would way rather talk about sports than anything having to do with Jesus. And you're the who and what's church and how is, I'm interested in winning this battle. I'm interested in keeping my focus where it needs to be, when it needs to be. I believe I got a house full of people with the same thing. I believe that. I believe it. I really. I believe it. Praise God. Praise God. So throw that junk away. Don't just put it in the bottom drawer for later when you. When you what? Walk away from the plan of God and go back to hell? Just go today then. Don't even throw it away. My God. Well, I'll just quit meth for a while. I'll just put my stuff in the downstairs or something, you know? Like, hmm, that's weird. That's weird. Sister Nelly, how crucified was Jesus? <laughs> Did he go halfway for me and you? You finna go halfway for him? That's not what we're doing around here. Right. My God. Oh, Jesus. Well, you know what's a shame? Is when messages like this separate the men from the boys. And people choose to walk away from a, a stable home and the blessings and favor of God. To follow something that doesn't even do anything for them. Sister Reed, if, if those players and the gods of this world cut me a, a tithe check every time they got paid, I still would preach against it. I still wouldn't have anything to... Hey, you got to have conviction, somebody. It can't, hey, oh, hey, it can't just be what your pastor preaches. you got to get something down in your heart. you got to get an understanding in your mind and in your spirit and a unity between the two and make a stand so victory can happen. I, I've seen too many people come and amen me and say, oh, that's right, because it's scripture. Yes, imagine that. I preach scripture. I preach the ways of God. Isn't that just crazy? And go, amen, amen. And the moment they had a, a ridiculous reason to, to jump back from that, and guess what they did? They scooped up all of that junk that they would, as a hypocrite, lie with their mouth and say, amen, that's right, pastor, I believe it. And maybe, te maybe temporarily have a little physical change, but instantly scoop it back up because it never got in their heart. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's a choice. 
that's not, oh, you're targeted by hell and you had no, uh, no, nothing to say in the situation. Jesus, cast yourself down because I can't touch you. You're the same way. We're children of God. The devil can't do that to you if you don't let him do that. Aren't you glad the Holy Ghost is enough to change, to change, to change? You don't have to be hypocritical. You don't have to be a liar. You don't have to be weak. You can be strong and focused. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Being obedient, resisting the devil, properly sets the stage for a miraculous. Because the next verse there says, after he says, hey, we're only worshiping the Lord around here. Get out of here, devil. Verse 11 said, Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. When you obey God and you stick with his ways, you set yourself up for the miraculous. How often do angels just come down just to hang out and give you strength? Yeah, that doesn't, you don't see that a lot of places really in the Bible. But, but it, do you see what I'm saying? He was tested. He was tried. He had the, the opportunity to do deals with the enemy. Don't do that. Don't make the mistake of trying to live for God and then on the side continue to work deals with your flesh or with people that have no intention of living for God and you're not strong enough yet to be a, a, a stronger influence to them than they are to you. There are some things you've got to cut. And it'll set you up for the miraculous. Oh Lord, how many people do I know that want a, a powerful ministry? They, they want healings and, and all this kind of stuff. And God does that. But you can't do that unless you do it just like Jesus did. Nope, ain't going to do it. Oh, you're going to lead me over here? Oh, whoa, we're, we're in the temple. Went from the mountaintop. We get all kinds of different circumstances you'll find yourself in just like Jesus did in the times of testing, but you're, you have to have a resolve that says, I will not bow. I will not even, he didn't even banter back and forth with the enemy like, oh, you, you'll give me how much? And then, you, wait, wait, well, what if I don't worship you? What if I just say I'm gonna worship you and you give me like half the kingdoms? You, he, he didn't even have that conversation. Do yourself a favor and don't, don't even start down that road. Some doors have to remain welded shut. Let them judge you how they're going to judge you. Because they're going to do it anyway. And if, if, if you don't leave it welded shut and they get a toe in there, guess what they're going to do? Take you down and laugh at you behind your back. And you thought, oh, well, I was just trying to be nice. No, now you're in destruction and looking like a fool. Yeah. Weld the door shut. Weld the key on the inside of the door and weld the outside. <laughs> Have the miraculous. Set yourself up for the miraculous. My God, he refused to take the easy way out. At Calvary, he refused to take the easy way out. He went to the garden. He got his flesh where, hey, give me somebody that knows how to pray. If Jesus had to pray, I think I really need it. And he went and he went and he came back and it wasn't. And he went back and he came and he went back. We can't skip prayer. Oh, uh oh, don't make me. We got, we got, I'm trying to wrap this up. Don't, do not underestimate the necessity. It's not an option. It's a necessity. Oh, should we talk about patterns right now? Oh, I don't need to pray. Y'all got all church prayer going on? No, I'm good. I'm good without that. I got, other, okay, well, I, I, I watch everything. Okay. Not that, oh, pastor's watching. No, I'm just saying I, I see patterns of people and where that leads. Oh, Jesus. Jesus did not take the easy way out. Even when he was offered the vinegar, the gall, to take an edge off of it just a little bit, he rejected it. You gotta be hardcore sometimes, folks. You, got, you have to be hardcore and tough sometimes. He got his flesh under control in the garden. James 4, 6, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, 
to God. Resist the devil. Remember Jesus saying, "Uh uh-uh, we ain't talking about it. (laughs) Lead me where you want. Okay, you want to test me some more? Okay, I'll follow you. (laughs) We still ain't even having a conversation. And he finally said, here's what the word said. Hey, y'all, hey, next time you're in a situation, don't respond with just what feels good. How about you respond with the ways and word of God? That's what I used to, listen, I, pra- I try my best to practice what I preach. I just, come on, I don't just preach this. I use that today. Did you know that? Somebody's like, here's a bunch of nonsense, pastor. Here's a bunch of twisted nonsense. And they're taking the big stamp of God and stamping it. And it's God that's telling me. I didn't just say all the things I could have said. I said, here's what the word says. Ha. Ah. Something like that. And uh, seemed to work out real good. Well, well, that, that makes sense, Pastor. That's your job. I, I'm trying to help you here today. I'm trying to help you here today. When you're on the job and not surrounded by the Holy Ghost, still living inside you, pray without ceasing, give God your mind, but when you're not in a service and pastor's not there and your brothers and sisters, all this kind of stuff, well, um, uh, instead of responding when I'm just laying in bed and nobody else is around and it's just me and my phone or it's just me and my brain, which is more dangerous, why don't you take those imaginations that come against you and cast them down? Or what does the word say about it? It's amazing the questions I get sometimes. Like, have you literally at all considered asking yourself what God thinks about this? Like, you have a Bible. And if you pray, that will match up with the word and you're going to get your answer. It doesn't need to come through me. It doesn't. My God, gentlemen. Gentlemen, be the spiritual leaders of your home. Know what the word says about it and be, be balanced and manly, a, a godly man enough to present the ways of God to your wife and kids. Balanced. Not, uh, you, you're going to get the axe if you, no, balanced. Please. Who are you hanging around? Jesus was balanced. But he's powerful. He did not bend. Praise God. Hey, is this good preaching or what? My God. Mm, that's 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 my that's him thank I love this he giveth more grace we got to wrap this up wherefore he saith God resisteth the proud but gives grace to the humble don't skip over that hey and don't waste years trying to skip over that don't waste years trying to skip that one verse submit yourself therefore to God resist the devil and he will somebody say he will He will. Hey, we've been going through stuff, church. I'm trying to give us a little recipe here tonight. If you want to end your storm, if you want to end some of the stuff that that you've been going through, there's a way to do that. Hello. Now, don't be so foolish as to walk out of here, leave half of what was just preached and go, well, I'll use these two out of ten things. See how quickly it goes from half to two out of ten? And then I'm going to expect God to break all the chains when I'm going to ignore 95% of it. God, where are you at? We, we ain't playing games. We don't have time to play games like that. All right? Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. I love that. That, that scripture is powerful. Sister Sandra, it'd be enough if he said just draw nigh to God. Like, yes, you mean I can access? You're telling me I can get closer to him? That's wonderful. But it doesn't stop there. And he will draw nigh unto you. He the God of glory, as you approach him, will get up and approach you. He's not scared of where you're at. He's not scared of your problems. He will get closer to you if you want to get closer to him. This is powerful stuff. I know it's simple, but it's powerful stuff. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Oh, double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Lady, same thing. 
be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves therefore in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. All right, this was written. Listen, God, you know how precise God can be, right? This was written to people that needed to hear it just like that. We're not always in that area. Sometimes somebody got to come along and preach you out. Man, get up. Come on, come on. You can live. You, you'll be all right. Let me preach hope into you. Let me preach life into you. All right, come on and get up. But, but sometimes we can get on the other side of that coin. And he's saying, no, 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 no. You can't just try to approach God all proud. You, you got to submit to some things. Hello, sinners. It's time to repent. Sometimes you got to be real with God just like that. <sighs> When we seek God with obedience, your enemy only has one choice. Because he still said resist the devil. And there's no better way to resist the devil than doing it with the obedience of Christ. The unbending, focused obedience of Christ. You want him to leave you alone? You want the enemy to flee? I'm still in the word. I'm not making this stuff up. Resist the devil and he will flee. You, you can't, there's no gray area in that verse. There's nothing to not understand in that verse. There's a way to do it right and it's effective. And Jesus used it and he left. My God, I, I want to do it with the passion of Jesus. I want to do it with the zeal and the focus of Jesus. Try to learn what you need to learn in the trial. Can I just drop this last key on you right here real quick? Don't be ignorant. Just paying attention. Listen, some people just are used to all their life not paying attention. And wondering how their life became what it is. <laughs> really? Pay attention. Learn the thing in the trial. You might not have to go, hey... And I know there's chronological blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. But what did, what, did, what did God wait for for those 40 years? We got the promised land already waiting. We already got promises about his people getting out of chains. Man, they came out of Egypt with a high hand. Nobody's sick. Here, even take my gold, Egyptians. Here, take my stuff. God parting the Red Sea, doing all the 10 plagues, all this kind of stuff. We got a promised land to go to. Round the mountain, round the mountain, round the mountain. Can you imagine how long of a... Uh, it, let's say it was seven days, Brother Daniel, going from Egypt into the Promised Land. Can you imagine how long that seven days would have felt knowing what was waiting? A land that flows with milk and honey. No more whips. No more... Oh my God. God told us. We're the people of God. Do you see all the miracles he just did? Look, he's, he's leading us out with a... a Fire and cloud and man, we got the promises. We got to sit. We got it waiting for us. Forty years. Forty years to let some things die off. Don't waste a trial by not getting what you need to get and learn in the middle of that thing. Something tells me if those things would have died off in 20 years, God would have adjusted the timeline if he had to, if he could stop the whole solar system from turning or switch it backwards for a battle. Hello, a battle. He can do something like that. He's not bound by time. I'm telling you, don't waste the last month and a half, church. Hello. Hello. Don't waste it. Get what you need to get out of it and realize just because things are not yet totally perfect, it just means just maybe you're remaining focused enough and you're making progress in God. And real soon, that devil's going to have no other, no other option but to flee. Stand with me in Jesus' name. He said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Did he not say that? Greater works than these shall ye do because I go unto my father. Hey, I know it's easy. Listen to y'all. I know it's easy to say uh, that, that last part of the scripture don't mean a whole lot. Because I go unto my father. Do not underestimate the power of bringing your flesh to Jesus. 
Do not underestimate the power of submission to the ways of God. I want to be focused enough. I want to be unbending enough. I want to resist the devil like Jesus did. That I can get him out of here. He's going to be shut up. You're not going to have to listen to his mouth. You're not going to have to listen to his doubt. All his fear, all the lies. He's going to be shut up. But there has to come a time when we get to the place where we can uh uh-uh, get out. Resist him properly. And we'll have some revival. Resist him properly and you'll be fighting. Oh yeah, don't, don't lose your blinders. But you're going to be fighting for somebody else. Oh, hey, I'll be motivated. Somebody picking on me, somebody wanting to throw down or something like that. Come against one of my kids or my wife or one of y'all, see what happens. You want motivation? You, hey, motivation when you're fighting spiritually for somebody else rather than yourself. Funny how all this just kind of plays together, huh? Almost like God knows what he's doing around here. Anybody plan on being distracted? Oh, Jesus, Lord God, we love you today. We give you praise. We give you praise and we thank you for your word. We thank you for the authority of identity. We thank you for the, uh, the authority of complete identity in you. I'll lay down the garbage of this world. I'll lay down whatever I have to lay down to fully take you on, to fully be mobile enough in this battle to win. I'll cast down the imaginations, hello, and every high thing that's wanting to exalt itself against the knowledge. you got to know the knowledge of Christ and bringing into captivity every thought that tells me I don't have time or I don't have enough money or I don't have enough something something things aren't perfect enough no it's not going to be perfect enough till we're on streets of gold hallelujah Oh, we love you today, Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Ghost. Uh, That's not just in this house, but it walks out with us if we have it. uh, And we can stay hooked up to it. uh, And we can tap into it. And we can pray without ceasing. uh, And we can speak in tongues. uh, And we can receive strength from preaching and worship. uh, Hallelujah. We live for you outside of these walls. Let us be lights that shine. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let us use the authority you've given us, God. Let us not do deals with the enemy. Let us not do deals with our flesh. Let us not have conversations. Let's just cut them off. Oh, no, 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 no. I may have used to do done that, but I'm a child of God. I used to look like that, but now I'm representing Jesus. I used to go there, but now I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for the confidence we have in you, Jesus. Oh, come on, just come, can, can you thank him right now? Come on, just thank him. Hallelujah, just thank him. Hallelujah, thank you for your spirit here today, Lord. Thank you for your word, Jesus. Oh, you're going with us. Thank you for the armor of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Thank you for these things, God. Thank you for the fighting victory surety we have in you. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost still cleans out closets. The Holy Ghost still cleans out houses. The Holy Ghost still cleans out phones. Because you know why? The Holy Ghost still cleans out minds. The Holy Ghost still cleans out spirits. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you today. We love you today. We love you today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's weird without music, huh? Let your faith and obedience pave the way for the miraculous. Finish the work. Whatever you have to finish, go on and get it done. 
and watch things happen. Praise God. Praise God. Love one another. Praise God. If you feel like praying right now, go on and pray. Hallelujah. Do whatever you got to do. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. F5's at Sister Nelly's house. Praise God. We love you, Lord. He'll give you the strength. My God, don't forget the Holy Ghost strength. Hello. People forget that all the time. They go, well, I got it. I must be saved. Use the strength. God. Praise God.